Welcome, Growth Tribe, fellow marketers, educators, and entrepreneurs or business owners. This is another training class to you, brought to you by Global Social Media Marketing, based here in Denver, Colorado. And today we're going to be talking about how to use a different approach with audience insights in 2019 for how you can go about segmenting your audience and also using search platforms in order to define those audiences in a way that you can really leverage uh, to find the right audience to create for your ads. So I want to start today's video with a quick little story and go um, into the world of insurance. Um, you know, I'm doing some things this year with a client called John Hanna Life Insurance. If you haven't heard about him, definitely check him out in Atlanta. Um, but we'll start the story with my father. My father um, worked for Allstate Insurance. He sold life insurance, um, you know, for 33 years. He owned his own agency with my mother. Um, and honestly, his his story is a mouthful. You know, it's it's a great story for me as a fellow entrepreneur. Um, you know, he had a two he had a 2.5 million dollar book of business with renewal retention ratio of 90 percent. Guys, you know. If I could keep 90% of my customers, I would be a pretty happy camper. And I think that one thing that my father taught me about being able to manage and be a All-State President's Conference and National Champions Awards for being top 20 to 30 agents out of 400 agents um, is that he focused on relationships. And I think that that is what we're trying to create on social media as well. And so I think, you know, an insurance that holds tr as well too, right? You know, it's a very relationship-based industry. My father and my mother, you know, as most people did in insurance early on in the uh, 90s when direct mail was very effective, they did post mailers. My, you know, my dad networked through um, conferences and things like that. And Facebook wasn't that available. And later on, he would go to, to AAA Um and, you know, I think that, you know, today, if I was able to help my father um, make those sales that he could make, he would be a very good uh, example of someone that could do very well on Facebook because he ultimately built his insurance business around relationships. So I'm going to start that good feeling um, with that, you know, leading in um, it, to John Hanna. John Hanna, we're going to be running some Facebook lead ads for him in Georgia um, as he sells life insurance. Um, and so one of the things that we did for, for John Hanna early on is we built him a website and, um, you know, he goes in and he talks about long-term care insurance. He talks about some of the different lines of insurance that he provides, where he's located, and now he has his LinkedIn presence. Um, so that's been great for John, you know, he's getting his name out there, um, and, and he's, he's focusing on his relationships and personally branding himself. He now has an online presence. Hats off to John. And, you know, thank you for the opportunity for us to, to work with you in the new age of insurance and, and digital marketing. So where I'm headed with all this is now kind of going into, you know, if I'm John or if I was Dan Kepner and I'm looking to create an audience for myself on Facebook um, through Ads Manager, what we can do is we can see here, here's an audience that we had uh, created for John recently. Um, you know, we've got about 510 people. You know, we targeted Georgia. John's based in Georgia, around mainly the Atlanta area. But we, we decided to go with Georgia to give him a bigger sample size. Um, people that are buying life insurance, you know, um, we find that are in kind of this older age demographic. Um, reason being uh, in, in insurance, if you think about life insurance, right, you know, um, people are married. Um, by that time, people are further along on thinking about retirement. Um, maybe they're, they're later on in their career um, and they're really preparing for the future. So life insurance is one of those things, you know, I can even, you know, say it myself at 31, a lot of millennials, we may not be thinking about that as much at an earlier age. So that age demographic is, is important. We, we go into languages, you know, that's, that helps us define our audience. And then we, we did some interest-based things. You know, th this is um, Facebook Audience 101. Most marketers out there, if they're using Facebook, they know how to do this. It's going into the interest category. Um, 
and typing those different types of interest in here that you would see. So, you know, you can see that we typed in um, insurance and got a bunch of different types of insurance. So we went with these types of, um, you know, choices because those were relevant to life insurance. So health insurance, insurance policy, term life insurance. Um, and then we went and, and what we did was we also excluded some people. We excluded other insurance agents, um, brokers, right? Because maybe those people have also liked some of these things as professionals. They're, they're, they're liking those things for knowledge um, and they sell those things. So with that being said, this was this is an example of an audience that you know we created um, for John. But I, I want to show you some other creative ways in which we could go about uh, creating an audience. So let's go over to uh, Global Social Media Marketing, and we're going to go into uh, John's account here. And we're going to go into his ad account. And from there, what we're going to do here is we're going to go into the uh, drop down All Tools, and then we're going to go to what we call Audience Insights over here on Planning. And now we're going to select everyone on Facebook again because we want to have a bigger sample size. We're trying to create Facebook ads. That's that's ultimately how um, you know Audience Insights is helping us within that ads account manager, right? So it's a tool for ads. And um, you know if we have a smaller page or you know we don't have a big presence, we really understand what the whole world of Facebook is doing here. So you know some quick things we've already looked at John's kind of age bracket. So I'm going to slowly kind of go emulate that, but then readjust here and show you how we can create some creative approaches to um, audiences here. So <clears throat> we're going to start with his, his age demographic. That's going to hold pretty solid. Okay. That's all we're changing so far is the age. So here's, here's our audience. We can see hundred million countries the United States of America as a default that's definitely what we want because John's in Georgia um, <clears throat> we can see it's 57 so you know this is going to give us some granular information right um, the, the money I think that a lot of people are looking at with this tool is when we get into the page lights we're talking about the different categories that these different kind of filters or segmentations here on the left hand side are going to provide with more data of <clears throat> people that are related or pages that are related to some of what that audience likes on Facebook. So this is some relevant data that everyone can use publicly. So categories, categories of pages, right? But then within page likes, what they're going to do is they're going to give us uh, affinity scores. And these affinity scores are going to say, you know, to an effect, this many more people um, are, are showing a, you know, affinity to like this related page, right? For everyone that's 40 to 65 plus on Facebook, there's a very high chance that the U.S. Chronicle would be a good option potentially if we thought that that was relevant for our niche. So now we're going to kind of get more into like niching, right? Um, Right now, we all we've done is age, and so this is giving us a big sample size. You know, we want to lower that. We want to define our audiences and segment. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to do Georgia. So now we're going to uh, geographic segmentation, right? So now we've got a smaller audience. We're at three point five million. We're still U.S. We're getting some different kind of categories now, right? Look at this: Georgia Republican Party. Why do we think of that? Well, Benjamin Kepner, shout out to Hotlanta and the roots of Alpharetta, Georgia, UGA grad lived in Georgia 25 years of my life and know a little thing about Georgia. So Georgia Republican Party, obviously most people in Georgia uh, are Republican. Uh, Fox Theater, great place. Shout out to Michael Hanner on doing a great job having living in America there and getting married with his love of his life, Emily. Um, and then, you know, looking at these other things, right? Um, We've got TV shows, you know, that that I know that everyone watched Georgia Bulldogs, right? They're very big um, in the University of Georgia, so you know th those are going to be a little bit more relevant um, for that kind of our niche. If we're, you know, John's based in Georgia, he's selling to that 
Um, and then we kind of see the different page likes. So again, we're going, we see the Republican Party again. That's because we know the state of Georgia is mainly Republican. Uh, Glenn Burns, you know, he's he's been a guy around that my mom and I and my father, we've been watching Glenn Burns in Georgia. I can remember since I was a kid, um, always telling you how to save money, really honest guy, great following, um, and really just a public figure and well-known person on the news. So, you know, I think kind of, you know, now we're, we're seeing some correlations, right? And I know these things because I live in Georgia. So, you know, I think having someone that's based, um, obviously in any geographic location, having that local type of mentality, right? I mean, uh, one thing that I think that really inspired global social media marketing is that global approach, thinking globally, but acting locally, you know, understanding how that audience you know, is in that geographic location. And what are those colloquial idioms um, or those types of, you know, very culture specific things to that geographic location? So for now, what we're going to do is we're going to now start to kind of look into kind of interest based things, um, you know, they're maybe potentially um, their relationship statuses, right? So We've got we've got some audiences here. We'll, we'll go back to demographics and kind of see where we're at. So we're, you know, we're seeing that we're higher, um, kind of in this demographic, right? Um, where these are going to be relevant. So let's go into interest now. So we might start obviously with insurance as we did before. Right? And now we're gonna we're gonna go back. And we're gonna look if there's any correlations and like, okay, Glenn Burns, you know, for insurance, the, the same things. This really isn't any different, right? I'm, I'm seeing a lot of the same things. So insurance might be so general um, and it might not be as well defined of really about thinking about our audience. So this is bringing me back now to when I wrote um, a blog article way back when I first graduated from the University of Georgia of segmentation. And I learned this early on in the international marketing class and in consumer buyer behavior on how to segment uh, different markets. And I always kept this for myself to remember that audience was important. And to this day, one of the greatest presentations I ever gave was a presentation on Barcelona to Tariqa holidays. And it really set the foundation for me and my marketing career. And from a CEO to tell me of a billion dollar company that why they remember that presentation is because of my ability to appeal to different audiences and understanding your audiences is, is marketing 101 and, and people that are doing facebook ads really need to focus on audiences so segmentation behavioral variables could be such things as product usage price sensitivity demographic segmentation right we already talked about some of that stuff age gender income occupation education you know, religion, social class, nationality, we could do behavioral, right? You know, <clears throat> what is their kind of uh, overall behavior when they go about you buying your service or product? Um, is, you know, psychographic, there, there's so many different things in which we can segment our consumers. And so I, I wrote some other things here for Facebook, right? Um, you know, here are some good things that we could be searching for websites okay how many websites exist in the world that facebook probably has and, and and there's this thing called google google should also be used in your facebook ads insights right as we see the black hole happening in the blizzard of denver colorado today we could have searched for top life insurance websites And here we go. So we see some state farm insurance, farmers insurance, health America, health assurance, progressive. Um, you know, we could take those websites and go into audience insights now and type that in. And, th and there it is. And now what we've done is we've created a better audience size here now with 20K people. And we might be able to start to see some more common similarities. Now we're seeing St. Saint St. Simon's Island. Uh, that's interesting. Glenn Burns is still coming up uh, consistently. Um, and obviously the Republican Party. We might now go and we might do something like family and relationships, right? Okay, so think about life insurance. I just told you that, you know, 
they're they're normally in their older age, right? So with that being said, someone such as myself at 31, I'm still single. I, you know, I'm trying to figure out potentially if there's someone out there, but for now, not in that direction. Someone in their late 40s, yeah, maybe they're further along. They, they may have already been married. They may have already had a child. So we might look at from a, a family perspective. Uh, we might also look from are they they married, right? You know, we might and and to kind of add those in now, right? That makes sense in life insurance. They're married, so they want to protect their spouse, like my father protected us, or they want to protect their entire family, or maybe they're also a parent, right? Maybe they're a single mother um, out there. You know, God bless those people. They they want to protect their child more than anything, and so I think that. With that, you can kind of <clears throat> look at this and see where I'm going with this, right? Now I'm getting more creative and thinking about my audience instead of thinking about my keywords. Keywords is a is a, is something that everyone's doing, and they're not they're not thinking about audiences. That that's so important. So now I've kind of given you some ways that someone that's buying life insurance you know, based on what I grew up from my father and, and talking with John that, you know, these would be some better things. And now we can go in and we can see some better similarities to, to kind of target. Right. So again, I'm seeing Glenn Burns. Here's a great idea. I might even go, you know, cause I've seen Glenn Burns pretty much the entire time. Let me go, go to YouTube at this point. How do you drive millions of dollars? And now I might go search Glenn Burns. And see what's going on. Look at that. Recently, two years ago, he had a heart surgery. Yeah. How relevant is that for life insurance? I'm sure Glenn, he, he had himself well protected. He has life insurance and, you know, he's fine and he's, and he's you know, living, um, you know, special relationships with people still, you know, and he's been a great uh, meteorologist. My dad always looked up to him. So maybe this is is something where, you know, we look at Glenn Burns there and, and we can connect now maybe relevant article and, and, and say our audience is liking Glenn Burns. There's an affinity score of 460, um, you know, and let's create an ad around that. Um, another idea is kind of clicking into these, right? So we'll look at um, Casey Cagle, right? She's got 168,000 people. Um, you know, she's she's got a kind of political presence there, it seems like. So here's some different ways that we've gone. We've done by, you know, relationships, interest, you know, their age, the gender, um, location. You know, this is really how we need to be thinking. But then, you know, going back to some of the other things, right, we could be doing blogs, magazines, right? So um, think about what is your audience read? We go back to Google and we type in life insurance magazines, or, you know, top. We want we want the number ones, right? Life insurance selling, uh, National Underwriter and Health magazine. Let's see if any of these come up. Okay, so you know that didn't come up. Maybe for life insurance, another option may have been, um, you know, events or authors. Are are there any are there any books out there about life insurance? You know, um, so now we're seeing. Um, some different top books. I'm, I'm going to the website. I'm researching. I'm doing my due diligence here. You know, I, I'm really taking the time now to research what my audience is looking for. You know, truth about questions and answers on life insurance. Maybe this is a, a good one. It seems like a good keyword title.
you know? So I think life insurance is one of those ones where it's going to have to be very specific. You know, um, we're going to see some other different brands that are going to come up for life insurance, but we might not see those different things. Um, you know, it, it's going to depend on your audience, right? Gender, age, demographics. These, these are, you know, one through 11, one through 12, those are more interest based, right? But interest is only one side of it. So use different strategies. I mean, you saw that, you know, there's not an exact science. I've shown you some different ways I failed in this. You know, that's that's what we're doing here is we're creating videos that we're trying to make and show that we we know as much as we're going to try to know for you guys and create and that sometimes there's not always an exact science. But I've shown you some things with the John Hanna that, that have worked. Um, you know, we saw a lead come in today, so that was very exciting. And... Also, I've shown you some different ways that, that John or any other insurance agents could go out there. So once you've gotten this audience, you know, I think once you've got that narrowed down, I think you need to just try to have it smaller here at the end. So maybe what we need to do here um, is just kind of eliminate some of these. And that's, and that's given us a little bit smaller. So now we're just targeting kind of um, married, you know, we could even maybe do a little bit older, right? Maybe we do 50. You know, now we're in kind of that, that nice, happy, you know, I think 50 to 500K is where I'm seeing conversions right now with audiences for leads and for, um, you know, not as generalized campaigns, but it, but definition is good, right? So I think looking at this, this would be an audience maybe, for example, that you could go about testing. And and then you can go in and you can save. You can name your audience and we're just naming this, you know, 50 to 65 plus Georgia Married with married, married and kids or parents, you know. Your audience will be available in the section of the ads manager after you create this. So all you need to do is just, just press save. And there it is. And now we can go and we can we can try to go and open that audience and it's there and we can go back and reference that at any time. It'll be an ads manager. We can play around in demographics, right? We look at that audience. So 80% women um, are falling into this audience within Georgia, 50 to 65 plus on Facebook that are married and have parents. So, it, you know, it might make sense when we look at this audience to run an ad campaign with that granular information on Facebook that connects to women. Maybe it's a woman. She's with her loved one, and and she has her kid over on the other side, and they're and they're talking to an insurance agent. They're going through that process. Maybe we've connected to them through the the Glenn Burns recent discovery because they can relate to Glenn. Um, you know, looking at these different types of things are important when we look at Facebook audiences, and you should be spending, from my opinion, a solid. 20 to 30 minutes before you create any ad focusing on the audience. The audience is key. The riches are the niches. And without doing your due diligence to check YouTube and Facebook audience insights and a thing called Google, which are the three most trafficked websites in the world that all now have their own search features and also all use advertising. These are the tools that you need to create effective audiences. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this story of my father and John and my mother and uh, how I've gone about thinking about audience insights and, and, and the stories involved with truly connecting to your audience. That's what we're doing here at Global Social Media Marketing is helping our communities connect to each other in new ways and teaching people to be empowered and to connect to their audiences as well. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. 
take care and please subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave us a comment. I'd love to hear from one, anyone out there on how we can add to this video and provide value to what you're looking to do with your audiences that you're trying to reach. Take care, guys. Bye.